indisputable that uh, the resurgence of manufacturing is going to be an awfully important part of our path forward. Uh, the average wages in manufacturing more than 16% higher uh, than the average wages uh, in the economy. And that should not be uh, any, any surprise in terms of, uh, to, to, to any of you uh, for, for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the point is, we are no longer entitled to expect that when a manufacturer is creating jobs that they're necessarily going to create them uh, in this country. You know, 25, 30 years ago, when many of uh, your employers, including the big ones, uh, would have been deciding where to locate, where to expand, where to hire. Uh, by necessity, by definition, the decision would have been to do so in the U.S., maybe Western Europe, maybe Canada, maybe Australia. And we just live in a fundamentally different world today. And we know that. And we have to approach every challenge we face with the understanding that our employers, including those in Delaware, uh, have choices. And they've got great choices, and it really has come home to me over the last few years as I've, uh, when I went to China, or India, or Israel, or Chile, or for that matter, dozens of other countries which I haven't visited in the last few years, but the fact is, you know, businesses now have a great workforce that they can choose from amongst dozens and dozens of countries uh, around the world. And so our job, you know, Really, more than anything else, when I'm talking to businesses, including those in manufacturing, and asking what it is that we can do to facilitate uh, your success, what I hear over and over and over again, it really has to do with making sure that you've got access to the best possible workforce. Because that's, I mean, we know that taxes are important, we know that regulations are important, but in the end, you differentiate yourself uh, based on the, the quality of the people that you were able to bring in. Uh, and we often, I think too often, talk about this global competition for talent, and I should say, by the way, that there are 3 billion people in the world looking for jobs, and there are only 1.2 billion jobs available. So when we really are in this global war for jobs, and more to the point, we're in this global war for talent, because the jobs are going to go where the talent is. And too often we talk about talent as though it's mainly a competition for people who have pursued a traditional college degree. And we assume that good, too often we assume that really good jobs require a traditional degree. But you know as well as anybody that nothing is further from the truth. So many of the best jobs available today are in technical skills, uh, requiring uh, technical fields, requiring mechanical, electrical, uh, maintenance skills, and these are jobs that pay well, often better than entry-level jobs that come with a college degree, as I'm telling my kids all the time these days. So when we talk about the talent gap or the skills gap, we need to broaden that discussion beyond preparing our kids for college. And there is a real talent gap in manufacturing. Just a few years ago, the Manufacturing Institute estimated that there were 600,000 jobs in this country that were vacant because of a shortage of skilled workers. And when the average age of a highly skilled U.S. workforce, manufacturing <coughs> workforce, is 56, 56 years old, We've got real work to do. And I think we've got an unbelievable opportunity to provide these sorts of experiences uh, that will be great for our young people and that will be great for our employers and collaboration between our manufacturers and our schools to make sure that we're helping our students get the skills that employers need. And that's sort of the holy grail. And it doesn't sound like it should be that complicated, it shouldn't be that complicated, but what it requires is more and more collaboration and partnership uh, between us. There is, in fact, a disconnect. More than 85% of U.S. education providers believe that their students are graduating ready for work. But less, less than half of employers think so. And we have got to bridge that disconnect between employers and our schools, and training programs to make sure that manufacturers have access to the workers that they need and that students get the opportunities not only that they deserve but that are going to allow them to build a good life for them and their families. And so there's some of the relationships that have been highlighted here today between Delaware Tech, uh, our, our public schools, and so many of our employers give us a great foundation to build on. And it's that foundation that's provided the basis for the initiative that I'm going to talk about in a couple of minutes. So that's number one. We need to, the, 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 the,
better collaboration and partnership. Second, we've got to change the perception that manufacturing jobs are suited only for those who could not succeed in college. And this is a huge perception issue that we've got to address. You know, there are a number of great models around the world, uh, including probably Germany being the, being the best one where, where, where Siemens is from, and where vocational training and apprenticeship programs are, re are regarded as equal to academic offerings. And students are proud to participate in these programs as they should be, and they know that these, these programs are as likely, if not more likely, uh, to lead them to have a successful career when pursuing one of what we call these accelerated career pathways. And we need to make sure that our students and their parents understand that many of the fastest growing and the most dynamic professions can be reached through a vocational training and that more traditional academic coursework <clears throat> is not the best path for everybody, even for those who can be successful. It's good for a lot of people, but it's not going to be the best thing for everybody. Third, we've got to expand our offerings of vocational technical training and on-the-job experiences uh, available to our students. Our career and tech ed high schools are growing their course offerings. Many of our traditional districts are partnering with businesses to offer more internships and workplace, ex uh, workplace experiences, uh, which is all great. And I think we can do even better. And the, the bottom line is that our employers are demanding it, and our students will be so much better off if they pursue these opportunities. So with all that in mind, I want to give an overview of the manufacturing workforce proposal. I previewed it in my State of the State speech in January, which I believe will take us a step closer to accomplishing these goals and also help us ensure that those students who choose one of these accelerated career paths, one that does not necessarily involve a degree, get a head start on front page stories about these programs, but they're literally talking about six students here and six students here. And we've got to figure out a way to take this to scale. And so that's what this proposal is really is, is addressing. So just as we provide coursework for students who are transitioning to college, we ought to provide specialized instruction and opportunities for those who are choosing an accelerated career path. And we're going to do that through a new two-year comp comprehensive program in manufacturing and something that I had not heard of before called mechatronics. I actually looked it up on my way down to make sure it was not a typo. Um, but this is for high school juniors and seniors. And it's modeled after a partnership between Delaware Tech and the Red Clay School District. The program brought in high school juniors in the fall of 2012 for more than 300 hours of training in carpentry and plumbing, electricity, and construction uh, safety, OSHA uh, construction safety. Three quarters of the students completed the program in one year to receive a technician certificate for uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. What was really impressive as well was the feedback from the, uh, from the employers. One major uh, HVAC employer in Newcastle County uh, asked for us to send a guest lecture to address the students, and that was followed by a solicitation of resumes from the participating high school students. And good job opportunities awaited all of those who excelled in that program, and that's what we envision for the manufacturing partnership as well. I think we've got good reason to be optimistic, even uh, five months before we hope to officially debut the program this fall. In fact, the, the enthusiasm around this manufacturing partnership resulted in two schools, uh, William Penn and Del Castle, piloting a shorter version uh, of the initiative. So this, is, this semester at Delaware Tech, 16 high school seniors are taking, in, taking an intensive course that covers math, uh, blueprint reading, uh, electrical and mechanical fabrication, and some other key skill areas. And after one semester, they've got the ability to earn entry-level jobs at companies in a range of fields, from energy uh, to pharmaceuticals. So here's how the full two-year program would work. We're going to focus on mechanical, electrical, and computer engineering. On alternate days, participating students are going to attend classes in their home schools and receive training on manufacturing equipment to Delaware Tech so that they can get the hands-on training that's necessary to land that first job. And we've heard from so many of you how important it is that these students actually train on the kinds of equipment that they're going to use in your operations. 
And so this is, again, one of the things that, that we've heard loud and clear. And to make the program even more meaningful, it's going to uh, include real-world experience. And I'm incredibly grateful uh, to the Delaware Manufacturing Ext uh, Association and to the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, which is just a phenomenal program in the state. But both are working with this to identify members that are willing to offer real-world opportunities during the summer uh, to our, uh, during the summer between our junior and senior year of high school. And so whether it takes the form of hands-on work or job shadowing, this direct exposure to the workplace is critical. And I know that that's you know, probably not a great revelation to many of you, but it's just unbelievably important that we focus on giving more and more of our students this opportunity to be, expo to be exposed to the real, real world workplace. And several manufacturers have already answered the call. That includes Agilent and Siemens and PBF and PPG. Maybe that's why we selected those three, uh, three of those four for the, for the last panel. But we're incredibly grateful because uh, you know, it just makes such a difference for these students when they can get in and see what it's all about. You know, so often when I'm talking to teachers or to students, uh, particularly those who are, who are dealing with kids who drop out, you know, oftentimes the kids who drop out of school, they're plenty bright, but they find that there's not enough relevance between, they don't believe there's enough relevance between what they're learning in school and what they're going to do for the rest of their lives. And so the gift that you provide these students when you give them this opportunity to get into the workplace is an incredible gift to them. And we obviously believe, and I know a lot of you believe, it's going to pay off for you. How this partnership is going to thrive so the collaboration uh, does not end there. We've asked that our partners periodically vet uh, the new curriculum to ensure that it remains relevant to the industry's evolving needs, keep pace with changing technologies and improving practices. Your businesses have to evolve. That's the only way you can be successful. We understand that. And what it means is that if we're going to be successful, the kinds of skills that our kids are taught and the kinds of technologies that they're exposed to have to evolve as well so that when they hit the, you know, so when they, when they come in the door, uh, they're ready to start, uh, they're ready to start contributing. Even the best program is of little value if our students don't take advantage of it. And that's why we, I, I think, need to be really concerned that traditionally so few of our students have been eager to pursue this line of work, even though it can lead to some really compelling and rewarding careers. So we're committed to working together with you uh, to develop recruitment tools such as in-school uh, demonstrations or on-site visits to members' facilities. You know, this is not, you know, your grandparents' you know, field trip. I mean, this is about, this is about, you know, what's going to be in your, in your business's best interest. If you're thinking down the road, just, you know, whether it's a few months or a few years, and you want to make sure you're getting the right people in the door to help you differentiate yourself and to help you, you know, meet the needs of your, of your employer, getting these kids in and exciting them through these visits is unbelievably important. So to ensure that the students who, who commit to this path will be rewarded for doing so, uh, we've also asked that our manufacturing partners help us de develop ways to better predict your hiring needs over two or three years down the road so that the current pipeline matches the future demand for skilled employees. Students who complete the program are going to receive nationally re uh, recognized certifications in advanced manufacturing integrated systems technology in addition to a high school diploma. And one of the keys of this approach to workforce development is that the benefits to students go beyond these initial certificates. Students can build on them and move on to pursue more advanced certification, doing so at their own pace and knowing that they've got the skills to succeed in these fields that are just moving so quickly. And so we're delighted to announce the details of this program and we're really grateful, as I mentioned, to the Manufacturing Association and to the individual companies that have embraced the idea of working with the state and our educators to develop what we think is a really innovative approach for career readiness. And it was critical to have the partnership with the industry association to ensure that there's going to be some kind of longevity to the program. Because using the data from across a number of manufacturers, we're going to be able to predict, better predict hiring needs well into the future. It's going to help us engage employers. They can offer a variety of support, as I mentioned, from the in-school demonstrations and to the opportunities for students to work side-by-side -side, uh, with your employees. So we really believe 
that this effort can ensure a pipeline of talent for your long-term workforce development needs, strengthening our economy and providing young people with the opportunities that will be so great for them. And this is just one of many ways we're working to better connect our students and workers with employers to strengthen our workforce for the future. And because I, I do want to point out one other one, would be matching skilled workers with the available jobs. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than to hear from an employer that they've got jobs to fill, but they can't find people with the right skills. So we've invested in what's called our job link capability. So it's easier than ever for employers to search our database for the employees who have the skills that they need. And in the last year, hundreds of employers have taken advantage of our new tools to find employees, and that includes the places like Cabela's, Cytel, Grayling Industries, and many, many others. And finally, to, to encourage Delaware businesses to collaborate with our educational institutions, both higher ed and K-12, I propose a competitive grant program, <coughs> excuse me, to fund public-private partnerships between employers and our schools and colleges that will develop the skills needed by tomorrow's employees and employers. And these are just a few of the things we're doing to bring everybody uh, together. Together, So I propose in my budget a million dollars to effectively build this partnership uh, initiative. So let me close with this. You know, Rich mentioned at the, at the outset that, uh, you know, we really do try to listen as an administration. And we know that these have been challenging times. We're encouraged by the progress that the economy is making last year. 9,600 jobs created in Delaware and outpaced the nation fairly well in terms of job growth. But we listen enough and we ask enough questions as I was to many of you outside in terms of house business and some of you said it's okay, some of you said it's going really well, uh, but it could be better for everybody. And so the, more, the most important thing that we can do, in fact, is to start by listening, which we've now done for five years. And when Alan and I visit your businesses, those of you who have who we visited, no, we asked one question. How can we facilitate your success? Because that's the only thing that matters. And what we have heard over and over and over again from the individual businesses and from the chamber and others is you gotta focus on the workforce piece. You know, if we can get the right people in the door, we know that we're going to be successful. So everything that I just mentioned is really a reflection of what we have heard from you. Now we think we put together a pretty thoughtful set of proposals uh, to address these issues. But we also know that times change. And so if you can, th you know, if you think of something that we can be doing better, if you can think of tweaks to the programs that I just mentioned, we want to know about it. This is a two-way street. And it's absolutely our job to meet you more than halfway, where we hope that we are. But we also hope that you see the value in everything that I just mentioned. And when I ask for your help, I'm not, I'm at, I'm not asking you to do me a favor. I'm asking you to make an investment in your own future. And I really do believe, and I think a lot of us who have been focused on this issue believe that one of the very best things we can do is have more collaboration and partnership. This is not just a rhetorical collaboration and partnership. This is not like for a speech. But this is like how in the real world do we make sure that for those of you who have a 56-year-old average workforce in manufacturing, you're looking a few years down the line, how are you gonna make sure you don't skip a beat? And how are we gonna make sure that all these young people who want nothing more than to build a life and build a good life here in Delaware, and the fact is we've got some great employers here, how do we put them together? That's what this is all about.